Hi. So in this part, we will look at some more things about DuckDB. There is one more video that we posted on DuckDB that was an introduction video. So in the cloud world, imagine AWS cloud, you have Lambda. So you can use DuckDB with Lambda. How? How you can use that? This is how you store the parquet files. When we say parquet files, this is your data file, big data file. So you have put it on a S3 bucket. This is your S3 bucket. And then you are uh, creating a Lambda function. Inside the Lambda function code, for example, uh, normally we use Python. So we can call DuckDB Python API to connect to DuckDB. So inside Lambda itself, we are doing it. Now you have to configure DuckDB to access your bucket. Like you can give AWS credentials to access the bucket. Now you file your SQL queries, DuckDB SQL queries, and it will analyze the data that is there in Parquet files that is stored in AWS S3. <coughs> now you process the results within the Lambda function and you can send them wherever they are needed. So your job is done. So basically, see, you use Python. Uh, we are using Python inside Lambda. We write a, Lambda, a Python code in Lambda. Within that itself, you have to import the DuckDB library and make that call connect to DuckDB. And then you fire SQL queries. That is what happens. So in the cloud world, key takeaway is this is DuckDB is not a cloud service, but it is cloud friendly. Okay. And it gives you performance of a local database and you can leverage scalability and storage of cloud. Now, in this example, you know, we discussed before how you can use this in the Lambda function. So, you set up the Lambda function, management console, you navigate to Lambda, create function, use Python as your runtime code. Deployment package, you, you create a deployment package that includes Lambda Python library and any other dependencies you have for your functions. You install the Python library, you can install using pip or bash, whatever. Pip install, this is the command we have given how you can install the DuckDB uh, package. And you create your function, uh, Lambda function code now. So once you have done that, you deploy the package, like you create a zip file which contains DuckDB library, your Lambda code, and then you configure credentials to S3 access. So you can, you have a IAM role, you create a role with permissions to read from S3 bucket and attach that role to your Lambda function. And you upload the deployment package, upload the zip file you created. So basically, here are the steps at a high level. You configure the Lambda function, you set Lambda function handler, you configure the memory and timeout settings. For example, suppose you want 5 TB of data to be queried, you have files which have 5 TB of data. So this will need significant memory and time depending on the complexity of queries. Then you add necessary environment variables like uh, on AWS, like you can put your credentials and so on. You test the Lambda function, you invoke the Lambda function, monitor the logs to check it is working properly. The Lambda function is just the same like we do it in AWS, except here we are calling or we are also using DuckDB libraries. So, key points what are the key points you, you have? IAM role you use in memory 
duct tape for S3 and uh, you should use parquet file very important because that gives performance so your data should not be in csv it should not it should be in parquet file not in orc file but in parquet file virtual tables this is good for large data sets because you don't have to scan the files again and again and you should include proper error handling in your lambda code and resource limits so you be mindful of lambda's execution time that is 15 minutes it dies so within 15 minutes you should design something which executes under 15 minutes beyond 15 minutes it will die so this is a, a feature that we learned about DuckTV. If we have to integrate in the AWS world, what did we cover now? In the AWS world, if we have to use DuckTV, so we saw a serverless implementation using AWS Lambda. Okay, so become a cloud kernel member for a very small premium gain access to lot of certification practice questions cutting edge technology contents and so on and if you become a cloud ninja member you will get content which are advanced in nature for advanced certifications and cutting edge technologies real life projects how we are implementing it that kind of know-how so this one is a bit expensive but this one is cheaper up to you so if you take ninja you get everything that cloud kernel has access to plus on top of it you have advanced content if you just take cloud kernel membership you only get access to entry level and intermediate certification content See you in the next part.